by most objective measurements, and because of that, it should be enough. But uh, unfortunately, it's not. It's not enough to have put, it, put most school districts in a situation where they will be in the black. Um, our school district, Nutter County, at 8.2 billion can just squeak by. We're not gonna have to make any additional staff cuts, but we are gonna have to drain virtually all of our ending fund balances and all of our reserve accounts to compensate for the cost drivers that are absolutely decimating our budget. And I know to some extent, all 196 school districts in the state of Oregon will say the same thing. Because PERS costs and increases in healthcare premiums continue to escalate at unsustainable levels. Let me just give you an example of what that means for us in Hoodera County. Our base budget is about $40 million. The PERS rate increases that go into effect start, start uh, July 1st for this new, next fiscal year are a $1 million, a little over $1 million increase each year. For the next, for the next biennium, that's a $2 million increase. The next three biennias have uncollared PERS rate increases of that same size that will be levied against us as well. So you fast forward out for biennia from now, we will be paying an additional $8 million, or not paying, certainly, they'll be coming out of our budget, an additional $8 million out of a $40 million general fund budget. That says nothing about health care increases, that says nothing about personnel increases and so forth. It's absolutely unsustainable. And as I've said all along this session, Public education and schools can never be fully funded as long as the cost to fully fund exceeds the growth in revenue. There is no end date for this, Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker. And I guess what frustrates me is that we stand here today uh, debating this budget, and everybody that I've, and everybody that's spoken thus far acknowledges that we have quote unquote structural problems. But to this state and the session, Mr. Speaker, there's been no tangible work on the structural problems that continue to plague public education. So I will have to be a no, um, because 8.2, as I said, is a great number, but it's not all we can do, Mr. Speaker. We can and we must do more, because we are setting ourselves up for what I would call an absolutely cataclysmic budget situation two years from now. Because left uncontrolled, our cost, cost drivers will be spiraling out of control. Who knows what the economy's like? We're living on fumes right now off of our rocketing economy that's due to cool off. Once the economy starts to slow down, revenues are going to be hard to come by and we're going to be in a world of hurt. So we have to do something more. We have to address our PERS cost drivers. We have to address our health care cost drivers. Otherwise, we are setting our kids up for failure. Let me just add one other fact here, and this is not meant to be political, but it's simply objective truth. When my party last controlled the budget writing process in this building, the state school fund was given 45% of the general fund, 44.8, I think. We're now at 38%. We talk about funding at the quality education model, QEM. If we simply would have maintained that level of funding for K-12, we would be at QEM right now, Mr. Speaker. We wouldn't have to raise any taxes. We wouldn't have to make any other adjustments. We would be fully funding teachers, classrooms, and we would have a much better system. Lastly, let's let me say, every communication I've received from teachers in my home school district, uh, the folks that are members of the Hoodery Education Association have said, please don't support inadequate, do not support a budget that's inadequate for K-12. So today I'm standing with my union members in Hood River saying, I'm gonna vote no for this bill and I encourage my other colleagues to do that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.